Welcome to the Waiting Warriors podcast. I'm Michelle Bowler. I'm an army wife of over eight years, a mom of four little girls, and a huge believer that being a supportive military or first responder loved one is way easier when you connect with a community. In addition to sharing some of my own insights and journey, I have set out to interview Waiting Warriors around the world so we can all learn together from their triumphs and their struggles. Together, we can do so much more than just survive. We can thrive. And that is what being a Waiting Warrior is all about. Hey, Waiting Warriors out there. Welcome to another week on the Waiting Warriors podcast. I have one of my good friends, one of my good internet friends. And as we were turning on, we realized this is the first time we've actually done like a face to face. We see each other's face all the time, but not at the same time. Welcome to the show, Evie. Thank you so much for having me, Michelle. It is lovely to talk to you face to face because yes, that is true. We talk a lot, but it's always through social channels and yeah. never anything like this where we've actually had a conversation. Yeah, I'm excited. So Evie's really cool, guys. <laughs> like, I, I don't spend my time with just anybody. So, but like her her intro is very long, if you can see my notes. Okay, so she's been married to her soldier for over nine years, who's currently doing a year-long deployment. So I'm the deploying, deploying, deployment, waiting warriors out there, Evie is with you. All of our hearts are always with you, but Evie's like in the thick of it right now. Evie, why did I, dang it, that's your fault. You said Evie earlier. I am sorry. I'm sorry. It's my fault. I should have even talked about it. When you didn't ask about how to pronounce my name, I should have just. It's true, I did, but I didn't ask. I said sometimes I have to ask. Anyways, yeah. this, <laughs> forgive us, guys. So <laughs> she works as a full-time recruiter for the WWC Global, which is a woman-owned small business, um, business government contracting firm that was actually started by a military spouse, which is super cool. And she's the executive director of Independent, which is a nonprofit passionate about military spouse wellness, which if you have followed on Instagram for a while, the waiting warrior on Instagram, then you know, their wellness summit is super awesome. They do lots of cool stuff. If you know my love for gardening, their wellness summit two years ago, two years ago, they had this super cool gardening um guru I was gonna say nerd but like I say nerd in a loving term like I'm a gardening nerd but he helped us realize like ways we could still garden as military spouses because I kind of had given that up for a year and thought like oh I'm just not gonna be able to but there are ways and there's cool ways so the wellness summit's super cool but independent does like so much cool stuff you guys do so much cool stuff but let's talk let's talk about wellness because this mm. Coming up is the Wellness Summit again in March. I want yep. to say it's the first to the fourth, but is that last year's? Why am I remembering last year's dates? It's the first through the sixth. So it's oh, over know. five days, and the sixth cool. day is the recap day where we just talk about all the amazing things that happened cool. during the week. It's cool, guys. Like, this is, I don't know, like, I know we talk on this podcast sometimes, like, wellness, and I'll talk online about it, like, we, you know, we all know we have to think about ourselves and we matter and all that kind of stuff. But like, do it, is there really, I don't know, so, sometimes I try not to get cynical, right? But like, mm. sometimes it's like the military says, yes, you matter. You're, you're the glue. You're the, I don't know, what else do they call us? Like, yeah. you know, oh, you the military. Yes, we care about you, but we're going to take your spouse away for a year and you have to deal with this and this and this, you know, like, it's like, I appreciate the words, but there isn't always like something to help me do it. And mm. that actually like feeds me instead of taking away from, from me. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like it's largely been up to me to 
to feed myself and to replenish and all that kind of stuff. But, and so I was so excited when I found out about independent and the wellness summit, because it, it does that for us, right? Like it's the place that we can go and you can just go listen and be like, literally, I mean, not literally fed. They don't send you food, but like, yet, yet, yet. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Don't ever be <laughs> definitive. Yeah. Stuff. Yeah. But like, but you guys know what I mean. Like it's 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 somewhere where you can go to act in the military community to actually um be a part of something and to to be rejuvenated by instead of like another meeting where they're gonna ask you to do something, which is which is all good. Like I I love the military community, but I think you guys know you know what I mean by that sentiment. Yeah. So that's, and that's why we do, that's why we do the summit is because we realize that who better to talk about wellness than military spouses. And, you know, I know that your audience is also first responders, but it's open to first responders as well, mostly because as service spouses, we're asked so much to give of ourselves to yeah. our service member, our children, if you have them, our community. And then, it, and if you're working your job and it's like, you have all of these things that for some reason become the priority. And then the last person that you're thinking of in terms of all of the other stuff is yourself. And then the next thing you know, we have a bunch of burnt out, unhappy, unhealthy military mm -hmm. spouses who are trying to keep the home life together, yeah. but in, on the inside are, you know, sometimes just falling apart. Yeah. Which like nobody, nobody actually wants to be like that, but we yeah. feel like we have to. So what does wellness mean to you? You know, like, you know, there's healthy, there's wellness, there's fitness. What, what does, but like wellness feels, I don't know. I know how I feel about it. what, what does it mean to you? <laughs> well, I mean, I think something that really resonated with me when I found independent, so I am not a founder. I mm -hmm. found independent just yeah. like everybody else typing into Google, typing, I typed in military spouse wellness yeah. because I was struggling living in Korea. I'd probably been the healthiest ever in Fort Lee, New Jersey. There's the Fort Lee, New Jersey. There is a Fort Lee, New Jersey, but Fort Lee, Virginia is where I was. <laughs> uh, <laughs> And when I moved to Korea, I was really struggling because everything that I had done in Virginia wasn't really available to me in Korea. And I had to relearn what it meant to be well. Okay. And that's when I realized that wellness not only looks different for everybody, but it also looks different depending on the season of life that you're in and where you're even located if you're military. And so what I've really learned is for me, wellness is doing things that really feed me at the time and defining what wellness is at that moment in my life. So for example, at Fort Bragg, which was the beauty station we were at before this, wellness to me was acting in community theater and feeding that creative part of my wellness that had been starved for years because we had never lived near community theater. And I had done acting years and stopped once I got married. And yeah. it wasn't until I was there and I was acting in a play on stage that I realized that there was a part of me that was hungry for this creative outlet that I had not been feeding. And so while we were at Fort Bragg, I took advantage of that and I did that. And that was my form of wellness. Uh, and, and it looked different than where I'm at here at Fort Leavenworth, where, you know, I'm running more, I'm working out more, my spouse is deployed. And so that obviously looks different as well. So it's really, I think, just letting go of other people's definition of wellness and deciding what it means for you at that point in time yeah. and knowing that it can change and that's okay. Yeah. So how do you kind of cope with the change though because like it's it's easy to say like oh yeah I'll do that here and then I'll just do something else but at the same time like our heart kind of grows attached to things and and obviously like it feeds us it serves us it helps us feel well so how do you how, how do you make that jump 
I would be lying if I said that there isn't a part of me that's not grieving that I'm not acting right now. Yeah. And what I am doing right now, because I don't have theater as a part of my life and that creative outlet, I've had to learn to do other things, which maybe mm -hmm. don't give me the same satisfaction, but I see them as stepping stones. So then when I have the opportunity to go back, I have not just been stagnant in that area. So right now that looks yeah. like singing Broadway tunes in a house by myself because no one can hear me sing. <laughs> um, I, I, I'm on YouTube and I'm taking, you know, some voice lessons, whether it's singing or even um, uh, accents. Yeah. So I'm still developing, but it looks different because it's not the actual performing and it's the performing yeah. part of acting that really is what feeds that part of who I am. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, so there is a grieving that goes with it. And, you know, I don't, uh, we'll talk a little bit later about my definition of optimism, but it's just because I say that wellness looks different and a season of life that you're in, you know, your wellness is going to look different. Doesn't mean that you're not going to be sad if something really works for you and you don't have access to it or your time just doesn't give you the ability to do it in that way. Uh, and I yeah. think that that's something that we need, just need to recognize. And maybe, maybe it's even having that conversation with your spouse if they're home or if they're not working in a, a self-care budget and that self-care budget could look like something you know daycare so you can then run the the long training runs on the weekends that really give yeah. you peace of mind that you couldn't do before so it's creating a life around the things that are a priority for you yeah. and and, and sometimes that means that you're just not going to be able to do other things. So yeah. I, I think it's important that we're realistic with what we can accomplish. And if it is something that's really bothering you, like right now I can't act, like I, I just can't do it. Yeah. But if I could, I would create a schedule and a life and conversations with my spouse, even a workout plan and eating around creating that opening in my day so that I can devote the time. To yeah. That. Yeah. Which is like, it's so interesting to keep on saying like creating, like you're creating your wellness, you're creating your schedule and it like that. Um, it doesn't feel so like not opposite, but like, I don't like, that's not how, it feels like your day goes. Do you know what I mean? Like, it feels, it's, but like with kids, like I, and I'm constantly trying to like fight this battle and the mindset of like, my kids dictate the schedule. The mm -hmm. military dictates the schedule. Where we are dictates the thing is like, no, like if we take that power back that we we still get to create it might look different but we still get to create it like then you know suddenly so many more things open up and I actually just heard from a life coach that I am like working with now like she says you like when you're putting your calendar and stuff like calendar out your wellness your self-care whatever you want to call it but like what if you calendar it out your stuff first and I like mm -hmm. still haven't been able to do it I don't know why like it's like but but then what if everything else fit like doesn't fit it's like what if what if like okay so the laundry schedule doesn't stay perfect mm -hmm. and you know or or what else would fall off like your Instagram scrolling time like is that the worst no but we feel like we don't have time well, and, and that's why I use the word create. I, I think another word that a lot of people use is create, you know, is boundaries. And it's those little buckets of time that you as an individual need to respect for yourself and hold yourself to because other people are going to be bulldozers to your yeah. boundaries if you let them, right? Yeah. Whether it's your children, whether it's your spouse. And it's not because they're intentionally bulldozing over your boundaries. It's because 
we're allowing them. But also, to your point, there are situations in military, in service spouse life, that will bulldoze over their boundaries. But yeah. I think we have this perception that it happens all the time. And yeah. so we don't create those opportunities for the the times during the day or the week, you know, mm -hmm. don't start if you're if you're if this is something that you haven't done in a while, as they say with working out, saying that you're going to do it every day, you miss one day and then you think you're a failure. Right. It's not going to work that way with this either because it's a form of self-care and for whatever reason we just have the hardest holding ourselves to to that whatever that looks like for you. But I think it's also accepting for ourselves that sometimes we allow those boundaries to be encroached upon, or I like the word bulldoze, bulldoze boundaries. Um, and we need to take responsibility for that and not telling that person, no, I cannot do that right now because I am doing this. Yeah. Um, great example of this, and, and it sounds so silly, but it felt very empowering. So I had planned a pedicure for myself on like a Thursday afternoon at I think 1.30. I had planned the whole week around having this time for just myself. I like to get a pedicure and I like to go by myself because I just like to sit there with a book and read. I'm not an overly social person when I go even get my hair done. And a friend of mine, actually with Independent, asked if I could help her with something. And, oh, mm -hmm. am I available at, I think, two? And there was a part of me that felt silly saying, no, I can't because I have a pedicure. Because I didn't actually have an appointment for the pedicure. It mm -hmm. was just something that I had written down. And I think before really working with Independent and hearing so many people talk about the importance of of respecting our boundaries and that's our responsibility, I realized, you know, no, I set this time for myself. And so I told the person, I said, no, I am not available. Um, I'm going to go get a pedicure. And at first I wasn't even going to tell her that, but then I realized, <laughs> like, why am I hiding the fact that I am saying no to something because I'm respecting my boundary? Yeah. If I say that, then maybe it will give her the permission later to do the same. Yeah. And it was so empowering. And to this day, I think to myself, like, yeah, Evie, that was great. <laughs> no. And it actually makes it easier because guess what? Nothing bad happened. Like literally yeah. nothing bad happened. We were able to meet later. Um, we still met our deadline. We still did whatever the project was. It just didn't happen at that time yeah. and I had great toes you know win win your feet felt good they looked good and everything still works out but like we but we I don't know if like dramatize everything like it's it just tugs on us so hard to give to everything else but us mm -hmm. like so does like I don't know, like, do we need to, I don't know. I think honestly, and what I do is when I see my friends doing something for themselves, I give them kudos. I say, great, good for you. I think we need to do more of that. We need to encourage each other because it is hard. It yeah. is very hard. And I think, especially as parents with young ones, it's hard to ask for that time for yourself because you know it could be time that you're either spending with them or time that you're spending maybe doing a project that you've put on or that put off or that mountain of laundry or something mm -hmm. else. And for some reason, prioritizing whatever that self-care looks like to you just doesn't seem as important as the day-to-day -day tasks that are our responsibility. And asking for help so say asking if you have an older child to do that for you, or even just asking your spouse to, to fold that pile of laundry when you know that it's something that you generally do in the house, it's really yeah. hard. And so uh, giving each other encouragement as a military spouse community, and especially if you're someone who people look to for example, 
I think we need to show ourselves taking these and how we're addressing those those moments where it's a little bit uncomfortable, maybe a little bit more publicly, um, is that's what social media is so great about, right? Like it's, yeah. our, it's our time to really see people and and see them in their homes talking about things that we all deal with, but it is it is a little bit vulnerable to admit that, yeah. um, and it's it's hard. But I think the more that we do it, the more that we give each other permission and make it normal yeah um, and support each other then it's just going to get easier but it starts with that first step of going okay what is my one non-negotiable this week and why is it non-negotiable how is it going to make me a better spouse parent coworker? because ultimately getting my toes done giving myself that mental break I truly feel like I was a better teammate to my teammate mm -hmm. and I probably had some ideas that I might not have thought of if I had just continued to go throughout my day without that mental break and that opportunity yeah. to step back. So you're actually better and we know that, but it, like you said, it's hard. It's really yeah. hard to hold ourselves to that. And I won't lie. It doesn't get easy. Oh no, it does get easy but it's creating that habit and making it normal. Yeah, yeah. You're so wise with this. All the, all the wisdom. Um, how, like, have has, has wellness always come easy or how have you kind of grown into this as a waiting warrior? It has not. Um, it's not something that I really grew up with. I think the most physical thing that I did was I was in swim team, but other than that, I, it wasn't really because it was a physical activity. It was just something that I did. And then when I went to college, I did theater and I, I knew that salads were healthy. <laughs> um, it wasn't until my husband's first appointment, which we were not married, and I started realizing I am not okay. Yeah. <laughs> I am not normal. I am not feeling normal. He was in the National Guard. Mm -hmm. I had no idea what to expect from a deployment. And I remember going to work and just being exhausted, exhausted. I remember having my phone on me and then running to the restroom and coming back and seeing a missed call and just breaking down at my work desk. Like I was acting completely out of the norm and I had no clue why yeah. and it wasn't until that started happening when I realized wait a second what what's going on let's mm -hmm. learn about that but then also what can I do because this is not how I want to live my life and I also didn't think it was really healthy for my relationship with my then boyfriend either where every time we talked I was struggling emotionally and mentally um, I was afraid to tell him, hey, you calling me at 3 a.m. is really messing with my work day. <laughs> is there any other time, you know? Yeah. Um, and he said, oh, yeah, that's fine. I don't need to call then. Um, yeah. But it was scary to ask for that because in my head, I felt like I needed to be available whenever he was available. Yeah. And being able to talk about that and set you know, again, those expectations was helpful because then I wasn't missing his phone call. I wasn't waking up at 3 a.m. We talked before. I'm not a morning person. Um, and and I just did so much better and I thrived at that point. And then a second deployment and now this third deployment, I think I'm probably the most prepared I've ever been because I found independent, because I've had access to way more resources. You know, we've met other fantastic service spouses are sharing more online. Um, just the, the access to resources and the fact that the internet has made them so accessible, we didn't have before. And so it's really been an evolution, but it all began with realizing that what I was going through at the time, obviously was because my, my significant other was deployed because it started the moment he left. Mm -hmm. And I just needed to learn what that meant and what to do about it. Yeah. Which is just like, 
don't know. It's a blessing that we have what we have now and people like, cause, cause I don't know that military spouses didn't ever talk about things like this. Like I know there's kind of the stereotypical, not like old as an age, but just like mm. the older generation traditional or whatever military spouses but then kind of our generation is like no we can we can talk about these things and still be patriotic we can talk about these things and still like be okay and thriving like just because we're talking mm -hmm. about the hard things doesn't mean we're not processing and moving through them so I love that so real fast tell us about the wellness summit what can we expect um from the one this year and then we'll end with this yeah, sure. So the Wellness Summit is a virtual event. I like to tell people we were doing virtual before virtual was cool. This sure. is our, yeah, this is our sixth year running a virtual Wellness Summit. And we did that because military spouses are stationed all over the world. Service, you know, uh, first responder spouses live all over. Mm -hmm. National Guard spouses are not near bases. And, and access to travel, missing work. Um, not having access to childcare. These are all boundaries that we wanted to remove because yeah. we truly believe that, well, military spouse, service spouse wellness matters. And our mission is to make wellness accessible. And so whatever boundaries or, um, yeah, you know, whatever boundaries that prevent you from accessing wellness, whatever that means to you, we want to try and remove those. Yeah. Uh, the theme this year is be well. So for us, it's both an action. What are some steps you can take to your point? You listened to an interview about gardening yeah. and it gives you actionable advice that you could implement in your life. So that's what we try to do. It's not just interviews on inspiration that make you feel good. It's stuff that you can take and put into practice right away, yeah. a month from now, whatever that happens to be. Um, so what are you going to do to be well and how as a community we can come together to create and foster an environment of being well. And then it's also kind of a wish to you. I've been ending all of my emails with be well, because isn't that what we want? We want everyone to be well. And I think 2021 is a great year for that to happen. And it's prioritizing that and, and then giving people the permission to be well. And how can we help them get there? So we have 10 amazing speakers. Um, they're all in the form of a podcast. So again, with accessibility, you can listen to them kind of like this at any time at, that's convenient to you. You can press pause if you need to rewind, whatever that happens to be, re-listen. Mm -hmm. And we have a free and a paid version. And of course, we gave um, the Waiting Warrior a 30% off discount for the all access pass, which gives you lifetime access to the interviews. But again, we have a general admission, which is free, which gives you access to the interviews, but only for two weeks. Yep. Again, trying to make it where wellness can be accessible because at the end of the day for independent, that's what's the most important is we want an entire community of service spouses who are being well and are not overwhelmed. Yeah, you guys do a pretty darn good job of that, if I may say so myself. And the the what's it i'm like you're you know what the the link oh, oh the words the link will be in the show notes and or if you're watching on youtube it will be in the caption place whatever is like right below i get to do this all those fancy yeah. words the words will be the words you need to just click, click and go because we like it easy okay yeah. So good the my favorite question, and I'm I like I'm really excited to hear your answer. What is your key to thriving that you want to share with your fellow waiting warriors? I've been trying not to say it this whole time because we talked <laughs> about it. But my thriving is something that I actually learned in master resilience training at Fort Campbell, which is where you currently are, yes. Um is optimism wed to reality. And there's so much these days about like, everything's fine and we just need to be happy. And, you know, we can we're get still through it. And, yeah. yeah. And that's why I thought it was important to mention, no, you are still going to grieve the changes and the lack 
of accessibility to something that worked before, but that doesn't mean that you still can't create a wellness routine or something with self care that doesn't still fill you up in those ways, but yeah. it's being optimistic, but it's wedding it to reality and understanding that it might not always look the way that you want it to. You might not always feel good about the news that you receive, but knowing that there's always something to look forward to, you do have control over many aspects of your life, especially yeah. if you ask for that control. And, um, and that's actually one of the interviews that we talk about is assertiveness, because I think especially as service spouses, we have, we sometimes don't realize that we can say no yeah, yeah. Uh, or say yes to things um, and, and ask for stuff. Um, but it's just so important to have that optimism, but wed to reality because life is not always just rainbows and butterflies, yeah. but it's those moments when it's not that make the optimism and the moments that are really great that much more special. Yeah. So can you give like a, just like a more specific, how that, how that has really looked for you kind of like, right. you know what I mean? So I think, especially right now, because my spouse and I are going through a deployment, mm -hmm. the easiest way to describe it is, do I think deployments are opportunities for personal growth and to do things that are very difficult when your spouse is around because you have one less person's schedule that you have to plan your life around? Yes. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I'm the first person to admit that I would want him home now. The nights are really hard. And even though I am using this time, I think really wisely to grow as an individual and we're still investing in our marriage, it still sucks. It's yeah. still sad and it's still hard. And that is not something that I'm going to gloss over. Mm -hmm. Yeah. for myself or others <laughs> yeah which is like again like you're optimistic about it you have the goals you have like i know you have this cool schedule i mean you know cool but like it's like a cool schedule of how you plan out your days and stuff but like in that plan is time to be to to just be to be well you know like mm -hmm. right and yeah. sometimes being well is being sad and processing those feelings if you have a significant other who say is working night shift or is right now, um, you know, called to, to a TDY, it's okay to, to be sad that they're missing maybe some, some memories that your family is creating that you want them there for. That doesn't mean that it's not also a good opportunity to have some really great conversations with your spouse or spend some one-on-one -on -one time with your child and really develop that relationship. Um, and it's not, doesn't mean that it's not good for their career, right? Yeah. So there's that optimism piece, but it's also recognizing that it's not perfect and that it's okay to be sad about the things that they might be missing or um, the moments that you really love or, or even sad that if they're the ones who generally cook, that you're the, you know, that you're the one now and it's okay to be sad about that. For me, it's my spouse is gone and not doing the dishes and I'm having to do that. And so I'm a little sad about that sometimes. The worst. The worst. Yeah. The it. list of the things that they normally do. And it's just like the little things, like the dishes or for Austin, it's that he like takes out the trash. He just thinks about it. He remembers when trash day is, and then all of a sudden they have to remember that it's like, gosh darn it. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Here. Yeah. Exactly. I love it. Well, thank you for coming on. If somebody wants to connect with you, what's the best way for them to do that? The easiest way. So we are on Instagram, uh, on uh, independent org is our mm -hmm. as our little at independent org. You can find us online, in-dependent.org. Um, really, if you just wanted to type in military spouse wellness into Google, yeah, it would pop up, which is pretty fantastic. Um, we're on Facebook as well. So just look for independent. Um, but we're, we're all over. We're on Pinterest. Um, but I think kind of the, probably the best way would be finding us on, on Instagram or online and then just following us because we have so many wonderful blog posts and everything um, about different areas of wellness because we try to approach it holistically from all the different dimensions and, and times and periods of our life. Yeah. 
awesome. Well, thank you so much for coming on the show. Guys, go give, you know, if you're in a deployment, please, I don't know. I just feel like we all need to send hugs and Evie's there. She, again, they, they share yeah. things like, I don't, I don't, it's, it's not random what you guys share, but again, like, is holistic the right word? Like, it's just all different aspects and stuff. You learn cool stuff. And if, like, something's not your cup of tea, like, I know you were doing, was it mushroom tea? Is that what it was? Oh, yes. Mushroom coffee. Yeah. Exactly. Coffee. That's what it was. <laughs> That's not yeah. my cup of coffee. But still, it was, like, it was, in, you know, it was interesting to watch. But also, I think just watching other people be well helps mm -hmm. you think of of ways that you can do that do you know what I mean like all so, the time yeah. I learned so many shortcuts from watching people it's it's crazy I, I'm like did I why did I ever do 12 steps to do this thing that someone did <laughs> online to do in five or something something else but yes to your point we we really try to address wellness to show that wellness looks different for everybody at different stages of life and no matter what you're going through or where you're at you can be well yeah Amen to that. Stop the podcast there. There you go, guys. Here's your your golden nugget, your shock of of wisdom. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming on the show. Um, Waiting Warriors out there, remember, just because it's hard doesn't mean it has to be miserable. Be well, guys. Thanks for coming on. If you love Red Friday, remember everyone deployed, but are like me and not totally loving everything you're seeing online or at the PX, I would love for you to check out my Red Friday design. You can see them quickly. There's a link in my bio that just says Red Friday t-shirts. There's a shop button on the website, thewaitingwarriors.com, or there's a quick link in the show notes. There are shapes and sizes and styles for everyone from father-in-law to the dog. Enjoy.